So, um, Kweishan, you told us about John Henry and how his work was inspiring to you. The story was inspiring to you. You make work about it. Now your work is showing some other figures, some other cultural figures who have had an influence on your identity um, and you're making work about them and combining some of them. So I guess, tell us what direction your work is going right now. Uh, yes, thank you for the introduction. Um, the work itself, so as we were talking about just the whole lineage and, the, and how we got here and stuff like that, um, recently, just, uh, I guess not even recently, it's been since February now, been in a residency with Artist Image Resource in uh, collaboration with Boom Concepts. It's a gallery in Lawrenceville, um, gallery and exhibition space, residencies, the full nine. So it is myself, um, an individual named Daryl Kinzel, or DS, who many people know him by, and then uh, Becca Zayla and Gooney. Um, so three of us are in the space collaborating, um, essentially pulling out some of our own work, our older works, and some of our archive pieces, and kind of working with those medias as well. I had an opportunity to like start up something new, which is yeah. really amazing. Um, just as we you know, talk about in arts careers and stuff like that, it is a beautiful blessing and opportunity to like, be given a space and given mm -hmm. um, the screens and materials, the freedom the time. to just like the time, right? Mm -hmm. To like actually do this stuff and uh, do this stuff, do this work, um, expand on your own body or your own experience, your own, just your artwork itself. And these were born out of, um, out of this residency. So these pieces that are up here now um, are not necessarily experiments, but they are like, they're processing, they're in development. So these prints will, you know, we'll either choose um, like three or four to addition. I'll probably do an addition of like 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. So when I say addition, meaning that like each one will actually be the same as opposed to all the kind of all different, different stuff happening right yeah. now. Um, but in the variations, at least for me, is where I'm able to kind of find out or really dig into how I want things to look or even how things could look mm -hmm. and the opportunity that I, I have certain resources and elements and then as well just being in a space like this having mm -hmm. all the things that, uh, you know why not yeah. you should you should really Keep take trying. the time to just do these different That's things about. try out things yeah um, so with these you know John Henry mm -hmm. led us into this conversation um, even with a mentor of mine who uh, runs the studio here Bob Beckman or Robert excuse me Robert Beckman um, has always kind of been, you know, a great supporter as well you know, in the space, but even personally with my work. And you know, sometimes he would actually kind of sit me down, do a little bit of critiques and stuff mm -hmm. like that with my work. And uh, when John Henry started, I was, since I was working on a larger scale, and I was really starting to dig in on like the uh, intricacies of printmaking and even the production side of that. So meaning like, as we mentioned, you know, it's cool to talk about the colors and the separations, but how do we actually execute that down? Right and what can happen in between executions. So wait, are we gonna block certain elements off? Are we gonna add color into the screen? You know, all that good stuff. And Bob really brought up some really great points that John Henry does serve as this, as this kind of functioning body outside of the story. You know, mm -hmm. and the body being like um, kind of that key, that text layer that goes onto the screen, or you know, that goes onto your artwork, that it really does solidify the piece. And as well, a lot of the elements that are happening with John um, are, kind of born out of that CMYK process so to actually kind of break all the layers down and use them as tools as opposed sure. to like trying to create this beautiful photograph image, but like right. the C, the M, the Y, and the K all become aspects in the tool belt to kind of figure out, you know, how can I change out these different layers and colors? And being that I was given this opportunity to build a body of work, you know, we essentially started the conversation with, you know, can we maybe find a few more figures that you know I've been either working with or I've been having conversations with as well to uh, expand on the conversation with John. You know, this black body, this, this individual, this man, um, this, this figure that was incredibly powerful for me, but as well, it's kind of just powerful on the page itself, just as he stands. And you know, the first guy up here, uh, just a little little background on my man's up here. This is uh, Professor K. That's OK. Um, for the world that does not know, Professor K was a uh, radio DJ and MC on a video game called Jet Set Radio Future. Yeah, this is DJ Professor K, baby, the master of mayhem, you know what I'm saying? No Bring you another Tokyo Underground Pirate Radio broadcast from Jet Set Radio.
Uh, really the same conversation we've had about John. Uh, it's just one of those games I grew up playing. Right. Kind of all part the time. Of your growing up life. And, uh, you know, the game itself is incredible. Cell animation on the game looks incredible. It still looks incredible to this day. You know, even all the conversations about graphics and images, you know, stands the test of time. Mm-hmm. And Professor K is the one who's kind of dropping the knowledge in between the scenes of the, yeah. the different levels that you play. Yeah. And um, he's just a radio host DJ um, with the image itself. I was one day just playing the game on the Dreamcast and uh, decided essentially to take an actual photograph of the screen, of an actual, you know, actual LCD screen. Yeah, screenshot, literally. Yes. Um, then from there, pull it out, pull out the photograph I created, um, did a little bit of just drawing some paintings and collage onto the photograph, scan that back in, and turn it into a screen. Um, the screen originally was a CMYK, it's the same thing with John, um, but the CMYK layers actually that, yeah, this, is, uh, this is C right here, it's a cyan, this is blue, so this is the one that will essentially go down first. But this is essentially the separation. So we have these separations, it's like having four different types of a paintbrush in a way. So you're having different levels of a paintbrush, or like different kind of bristles in your paintbrush maybe. Um, but it is, yeah, so there's, there's different lo- levels and values that come out with each screen. So you're playing around with the edit. You know, with different colors or with different, even different pressures, or even deciding. Well, um, I really love the detail and the texture I get from the blue face, but I don't want any of the background. Mm-hmm. So I actually decided maybe I want to block off certain pieces of that. But doing that times four with each level, with each level, with each color. Um, so yeah, number two in our little breakdown over here. Um, this is Eugene Boulard. Kind of see a little bit of Professor King in the back. So there's the elements that we want to keep. Some of the textures, some of the elements of color, some of just the elements of these figures and bodies throughout all the prints. And uh, really it might just become more and more subtle depending on where the focus lies. For this one we have Eugene Ballard. Uh, Eugene Ballard was uh, born 1895. He was born in France. He was a France AV, excuse me, um, Air Force pilot. Um, actually one of the few African American Air Force pilots in that time in his early 1900s. Yeah, you can all very- imagine. Um, but he spent many years, you know, on enlisted and then actually moved to America, which is, you know, where I kind of got connected with his story. Um, he moved to America and actually tried to box in America because while he was in the Air Force and he even spent some time in France, he started boxing a little bit, got a little bit of his prestige, you know, started winning some fights. Doing well in France. Some, yeah, doing very well. Moved to America thinking that the story would be the same, but the narrative in terms of just, especially in terms of his, his fighting and his competition, that he was thinking that. Essentially, you know, you come over and be the same, you know, whether it means getting a fight or, you know, setting up a fight, but it was not. Um, the love was not there for Eugene. He ended up working as an elevator operator for like a couple of years and then moved back to France. Was fighting a little bit more, opened up a very popular club for a couple of like, you know, the earlier black greats and the things that he used and stuff like that who were always in Paris. Um, and then he went back to the list again, fought again in the war. And, uh, you know, personally, I mean, even just in the conversation we were having about John and Professor, um, Eugene almost speaks as a little bit more of a real role model. I mean, he's, he actually lived, he was, there's no fictional tale behind him. You know, he's not a fictional story a character in a video game or anything like that. And he, in many ways, connects us into our conversation about Jack Johnson that we'll kind of get into real quick. But Eugene was, in many ways, he's a real story, real person, but his story is almost hard to believe mm-hmm. you know, right. for him to... That's a yeah. remarkable life. <laughs> right, so like for him to be born in, in, I think a lot of it does have to be with him being born in France, mm-hmm. born in a different place in a different time. Sure, in the early 1900s, I mean, early his life would have looked very different very if he was different born. Very different if he was born mm-hmm. over here. So it is, Georgia. and I guess I, I can admit and say, you know, I've, I've definitely thought about that person, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? That where I am and, mm-hmm. you know, where we are as a people. You know, would it, how much different would it have been if I was born somewhere else? And even, even in the conversation of Pittsburgh versus yeah. New York or sure. LA, you know what I mean? Like what? What does place, what kind of influence does place have right. on who we become? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, profound to think about it in the essence of, you know, international borders, but, you know, even just dial back a little bit and think about it. You know, the art scene in other cities might sure. be a little bit better. Sure. And, you know, I could maybe go to D.C. or go to L.A. and um, be 
running galleries or something like that? Sure. Or, you know, we have some, some different opportunities and spaces for us, but Pittsburgh, um, the bowl is a little bit smaller. Yeah. So, you know, the conversation doesn't necessarily escape as quickly or as easily. Um, so it is, um, it is a growing conversation. This piece I love a lot, a lot of layers in here. Mm -hmm. um, Eugene is a drawing from, similar to uh, Jack Johnson as well, they are both from the uh, fight bout mm -hmm. title show cards, like the yeah. little posters that you made. Um, Eugene's image is an early, early image of a, where you know, the gloves are super, super small, oh, like, yeah. tiny yeah. shorts on and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, it's kind of like if some, some people might be more familiar with Joe Lewis, who was a very, very popular boxer in uh, Detroit, kind of set the stage for a lot of uh, colored boxers in America mm -hmm. to start actually getting that type of title and uh, competition level respect, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, um, the body itself, even connecting with our friend Jack, you know, the conversation that I was having, excuse me, connecting with John over here, with, with our conversations of building this work, and especially with Bob in the room, you know, kind of helping me build out, you know, the way I want this particular body of work to look. Yeah. It was, in some ways, important to kind of keep this flow, keep this body, keep this, um, how would you say, this, this figure. This in figure, fact, you know, yeah, it is, really to stand you know, out. This kind of, this stand up figure, whether it is a shape or a body going in a certain direction, or even a certain status or value in the color that we're choosing. Yeah. So, like, Professor, he's a little bit larger. He encompasses more of the paper. Yes. Um, but you know, with these guys, it's almost it's a little bit more direct. Right, he comes into play. So I do appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Uh, but Eugene's still building. Beautiful, definitely check him out. <laughs> and then down, Jack. So 20 years earlier, in the game, um, Jack Johnson born in America, 1878. Uh, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time wow, in the I didn't boxing world. That early, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, so like, even the conversation, like Joe Lewis is actually the next one to come into this. To sure. Even bring it in, bring that into light. Um, Joe Lewis probably be the next figure that I cool. pull in to just have a little bit of have conversation with, if you will. He's yeah. in print making. Um, but Jack, uh, actually, I started hearing a little bit, started researching a little bit more into his story whenever I heard the. The not so good aspects of mm -hmm. the, the character behind Jack Johnson. You, know, you always, I personally always heard about you know what I mean his his lineage, his legacy as a boxer. As a boxer, you know what I mean what so he had great. done, where he was, yeah. in Australia and beyond, fighting all over the world, and um, you know even outside of all of that, he was. I don't want to say the the worst role model, but um, there were aspects that like. You know, I researched and there were things in the community wise, even just like as a person, he loved to drive fast. He liked to drive sure. fast all over the place. And, you know, he gets it's a reckless driver. Yeah. And even just to kind of wrap up the story or the type of character he was when given, when he was driving fast, if he was pulled over by the police, uh -huh. he would give the police like um, the tickets at the time, you know, police would pull you over for a ticket, you could get a $50 ticket. Right. Um, so he would, he would actually a lot of times require that money. I mean, it's, oh, if you could give it like at the time, you right. could get it right then. Huh. So you know, you get the fifty dollar ticket. Right. Um, Jack was the type of dude to give you hundred dollars because he's like, I'm gonna drive this fast. I'm gonna drive back too. You know what I mean? Like, if you catch me on the way back, the dude <laughs> bother. Just hold on to that fifty dollars. So it was, you know, you had this uh, almost next level kind of. He was gonna live the way he was gonna live. Oh, man. Right, right. He was gonna yeah. definitely. He was gonna live the way he was gonna live. Um, he was going to. Um, kind of spit in the face of anybody who didn't necessarily agree with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is also early, late 1800s, early 1900s. Well, we got this big black man, um, heavyweight boxer, making pretty good money and uh, doing whatever he wants to do, living however he likes to live. And uh, in a time where, you know, I read a lot of stories where that wasn't the case for our for our black brothers and sisters. Absolutely so not. Jack Johnson kind of had an interesting existence to be able to create his own world, create his own yeah. existence, his own his own little bubble of, of pleasure and luxury. But at the same time, um, he was still that outstanding figure of you know physical specimen in in the ring, in the cage, right. not even in the cage, but in the ring of fighting. So it was a kind of beautiful dichotomy that. I mean, I guess once we do reach a certain level, that yeah, we do actually, you know, we kind of aside ourselves in that level of greatness. But nowadays, the conversation around Jack Johnson isn't as shiny sure. as, it, as it was back then. But it's it complicated. Sense. Yeah, it's complicated. It's a, it's a, 
he's a fleshed out full human whereas you know john henry's a, a tall tale we just know like this thing about him um this is a humans are are difficult so, or complicated because i mean a hundred years from now if i told someone the story about jack johnson that could sound fake Right. Yeah, I mean, right. that could sound like that could sound like, or it could sound like it was based on somebody who really did box. Sure. Or you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily as prestigious or as glorious as it really was. Mm-hmm. Or you know what I mean? Even now, it, having conversations about it, the story could change. Right. And it could be that you know, Jack Johnson lived to be 150 years old and he's fighting all over fighting the world until and, his uh, 80s. And he just <laughs> yeah. is unbeatable. But like, you know, this beautiful way that these stories are created and to kind of have this space or this structure in the real is important. Mm-hmm. And even just building the work that I'm creating with John, that, you know, the conversations that we want to have are important to kind of keep in, mm-hmm. in the reality, in the present. Right. That, you know, this, it's a, it is a real story. It is a, uh, a story that had a lot of connection growing up historically mm-hmm. for students, for educations, but these stories weren't told right in those you know what I mean? so it is it is a kind of making our own narrative making our own tall tale our own little folklore mm-hmm. about the way these stories should be told so bringing people bringing these stories into the forefront so that they can become part of other people's identities um, since they have become part of yours is a really beautiful thing that your pieces are doing these figures are now um, being spread farther than you know, yeah, that's good. That's really beautiful. Definitely want to spread them out. I mean, maybe you get a couple of these in France. That'd be crazy. That'd be great. But um, overall, this this experience. I mean, we'll we will kind of keep building on this. This has been an opportunity for me to actually take a take a step back from the work a little bit. Um, you know, and actually sort of have the space to work in to develop the pieces, develop the uh, the images, the screens but then also have time to do this, do what we're doing right now, have conversations around the work, step back, look at the work a little bit, um, figure out that, you know, I need some more, some more, uh, need something, something in the back here with this yellow and orange, you this, know what I mean? This is, this um, is speaking to you as unfinished for uh, you, so. I mean, the center, the detail of John's beautiful, or Jack, excuse me, is beautiful there, but um, some of them got lost because I was doing some paint, mm-hmm. and I kind of painted some edges around, so I'll probably put it back on. A, it's a rabbit hole that you sure. need to also find a place when we're doing these works that uh, kind of have to cut it off. You know, the, the printmaking. When is it done? Yeah, there's so many. And you know, as painters will definitely agree with you, just painting and painting and covering something up until you know you feel like you don't like it or you do like it. But um, it's almost similar to that, but taking a little bit more uh, time to even put the brush down, or put the screen down, or put the ink on the page. Um, just because you know the medium is a lot different, mm-hmm. so you know when you make a decision, it is it's impactful. You sure. Know, sometimes more so than you want. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, or you know, figuring out that if I did actually add some elements of paint and brush stroke in here, that completely changes the dynamic of my print. Um, it almost doesn't really falls in the same lineage as Jack, or it doesn't doesn't have the same representation as a screen print would. Mm-hmm. Yes. A little bit more hand involved, so yes. it raises more questions. And, you know, I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. I like the best age. It's a really cool process. Thank you for sharing uh, your work with us. This is a really beautiful body of work, and I'm excited to see where um, where you end up after the, the residency is finished. Um, now we want to invite young people out there to make their own art based on this. So what we're asking you to do is to think of characters, um, people, legends, people from books, people from history, people from video games <laughs> that have been part of shaping your identity. And we want you to make art based on, on that person. Um, and at home, uh, you have the opportunity to do that with screen printing if you have that. If not, maybe you're making a drawing based on that. Maybe you're doing a painting. Um, we showed you screen printing because it's a great tool that we have that it can make multiples. Um, but this can just be a, a launching pad for you to go and make your own work and um, share your identity with people around you 
by making art. Thank you.